What's up? What's happening? Welcome to another edition of the Minor League Take. I'm your host, Brad Case. This week up, we got Nick Mears. Nick Mears um, and I have played together through three teams so far. We've played on the West Virginia Black Bears together for a short time. Then we played on the Greensboro Grasshoppers, the Bradenton Marauders, before he moved on to double in his first full season. Nick is an incredibly hardworking kid. Um, busted his butt, went from a free agent signing in the same year I, I signed a contract to making his major league debut this year. So this is the first ever major leaguer that we're having on the podcast. This is also the first ever Guinness World Record holder that we're having on the podcast. So I'm very excited to share that with you guys. Me and Nick also talk about uh, some mental health stuff, which I think is really important to talk about every no- uh, now and then. Um, and really, you know, he really opens up and really, you know, lets his guard down and shows you who he is in this episode. And I, I really hope you guys enjoy it. Um, as always, this episode is brought to you by uh, More Than Baseball. More Than Baseball is an organization that's helping minor leaguers like myself and many other guys across the league um, make it, you know, helping us out with uh, supplies and uh, equipment every now and then. So if you haven't yet, please go check them out. They do a lot of great work, and you can go support them by finding any of their pages at mtb underscore org. Hope you guys enjoy the show. What's up? What's happening? How you doing, Nick Mears? I'm doing good, Brad. How are you? I'm doing great, man. It's good to talk to you again. I can't – let's see. I think the last time I even talked to you was probably spring training almost a year ago, right? Yeah. Jeez. It's been that long. Yeah. Goodness. I was – uh, I was walking upstairs before we got on Zoom, and I uh, I was trying to think about the last time that we actually like saw each other or talked to each other. And, yeah, I mean, once yeah. in a while, we'll DM each other and say what's up on Instagram, but that's about yeah. it. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Dude, it's yeah. been a long, long year, and I'm sick of it and ready for it all to be over. But yeah, and like, I think it's been a long year for me. But like, for guys that didn't go to the alternate site or even step on a baseball diamond this year, like I I can't even imagine for them like. Yeah. such as yourself like that's way too long for no competition for me <laughs> yeah yeah man. <laughs> yeah, yeah you were so lucky to be able to go do all that stuff and we're definitely gonna we're gonna dive all in all that stuff um later yeah. in the podcast but you know let's uh let's go back in time start where we start with everybody uh the high school days of nick mears can you kind of give me like a good uh, image of what that was for you i was a dweeb <laughs> was <laughs> i was a dweeb was? in high school <laughs> am a dweeb but uh I don't know. I mean, I was I didn't really grow until my junior year of high school. I was like five ten, five eleven, and then I sprouted up to like six three to where I am now. You're six three. Uh, yeah, just because someone's smaller than you, you six seven, Brad. <laughs> Come on. I know, I know you're tall. Bad I don't know. For being wow, six, six three. three. Are you kidding no, me? No, you are tall. Yeah, you know, I it's been a long time, all right? Leave me alone. Okay. Uh, but I mean, I, I didn't throw above 84 until, uh, the summer going into my senior year of high school. And, uh, then I jumped from in a year, I jumped from, or probably like eight months, I jumped from 84 to 93. And that was, that was just because I I tried to throw hard because I was, I was tired of not getting those late end or the end end of the game opportunities because I didn't have good enough stuff. Mm-hmm. So my whole goal going into my senior year is I want to be the ace. I want to be the number one starter and I don't want, I will not accept anything else. You want to be the dude. Yes. Yeah. And at that time we had Logan Webb, which ended up being a fourth rounder to the giants in 2014 yeah, and I've he was like my name. Yeah, he uh, he was like my biggest competition, I would say. But I would I think of him as competition, but he's also my friend. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, you're it's, on the same team, but you're both working for the same goal. Like there can only be number mm-hmm. one, number one guy. Yeah, and at that time, he was like the closest to me in uh, skill. So that's who I went off of, and uh, a about two weeks before I had a UC Davis um, scout like or prospect game or whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. um, We had a dead period in baseball, so I couldn't practice. I couldn't throw at the field. So I just, I didn't, which 
looking back is stupid, <laughs> especially <laughs> with my recent jump in velocity. Uh, so I literally took those two weeks off and then I went to that uh, scout game and I, instead of being 89 to 92, I was like 85 to 88 and I went into the second inning uh, and I threw a circle change about 40, 45 feet. And I immediately knew it just went and just gone oh my completely God. in half. Uh, so then I kind of pitched a season on it or I ended up rehabbing it and then is that Brad? Yes. Is that Shorty? Hey, Brad. Hi, yeah, Shorty. Shorty. How you doing, buddy? You want to make a guest <laughs> appearance real quick? Uh, I just walked out. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> That's Shorty. Uh, I'm definitely leaving that. In. I'm not cutting that. <laughs> okay. I'm fine with that. Uh, I'll get him to come make a guest appearance. He he just has his uh, brace on. Speaking of yeah, blowing Yeah, I saw him post out. that today. Yeah. Yeah. That sucks. Yeah, it's tough, but... Uh, Anyways, so I blew out in like November of 2013, so the beginning of the school year, and then uh, I, I couldn't throw a baseball essentially until March, and that was because I built up so much scar tissue in my elbow that it was, in theory, acting as a temporary ligament, but I couldn't straighten my elbow at all. Like, I mean, I wow. still can't, but... I mean, I've I, never been able yeah, to. It was, yeah. I mean, it, that just comes with the occupation at this yeah. point. Uh, but yeah, I built up so much scar tissue. I ended up pitching my senior year without a ligament in my elbow. Um, ended up topping out at ninety-two, uh, <laughs> oh, you... and then, yeah. Holy shit, yeah. man! I had about like, you can't see, but probably like fifteen inches of horizontal run at ninety-two. Oh my god. Yeah, just, just because not like, when I would come through, I couldn't fully like get on top of it because my arm couldn't straighten. So I just yeah. pronated it. Holy shit. And it just went, phew. Yeah, no, seriously. Oh uh, that has got to be filthy. I wish you had video somewhere of it. <laughs> yeah, I, I would want to see that too. Yeah. Uh, but then uh, I graduate from high school, uh, have surgery from Ken Akazuki, uh, I still remember the day, June 25th, 2014. Okay. Uh, it, it's just a significant day to me, I guess. Yeah, no, uh, I mean, that's a big, it's yeah. a big day. It's, of course, it's, yeah, you're going to remember it, but yeah. I didn't, uh, I, I thought you were my grade, honestly. I thought you were a 2015 high school grad. No, I'm pretty young for my uh, high school class. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I think I was like the sixth youngest in my class of 500. Oh, crap. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, uh, yeah. So we're basically the same age, but yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, so I went to Sacramento city college, um, gray shirt did my first year. So I was underneath 12 units. Mm -hmm. uh, so my NCAA clock didn't start. And then the next year I rehabbed it fully, had a, a great fall, uh, got up to 92 again, uh, in the fall. And then two days before we had to report, uh, for spring, I thought it was a great idea to go ride a dirt bike in the snow, ended up flipping it, snapped my collarbone in half and ended up missing out on the season. Good Lord. I remember yeah. when I first met you in Morgantown, I remember you <laughs> shorty back. Yeah. Hi shorty. He's being a goober. You Brad says hello. Hi Brad. <laughs> Did you hear him? <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Sorry, no, but as I was saying, um, yeah, when we first met in Morgantown, I remember you telling, like, I, we were at some bar and I don't, obviously we're in that state of mind there and you were telling me some of the stuff and I remember being like, holy crap, like how has this kid been through like all this stuff? And it's, it, it, geez, like having, you know, pitching your senior year with no UCL and then also going out and then breaking your collarbone like yeah. that, like that's two tough injuries off the bat. Yeah. That the collarbone really kind of put it into a perspective like this is what you love to do this is what you're good at doing so if you want to do it for the rest or for the rest of your baseball career however long that may be you need to take it seriously yeah 
so it's that it was like a it was kind of a blessing in disguise because I would always like go out and do my own stuff but and like not really keep baseball in mind but once I broke my collarbone I started to treat it as a job because yeah it became like I get hurt exactly yeah yeah so collarbone happened my sophomore year of college and then uh I played my third year at Sac City Mm -hmm. went out to the Northwoods did really well uh then I came back to Sac City a junior college for a fourth year because I wanted to get drafted uh when I was in the Northwoods I had opportunities to sign a free agent contract with multiple Mm -hmm. teams I remember you telling me about this because you were 21 at the time right yeah which makes you eligible yeah yep uh well and I was at a junior college so I could sign whenever that's true there's a lot there's it's the wild west you can do whatever you want out of there yeah, exactly. Uh, so uh, I decided to turn down, uh, I'll say it now, a hundred grand as a free agent sign. Wow. Holy shit. I, I'll put it this way. I kind of, I kind of tore it up in the Northwoods. What'd you have? Uh, what were your numbers there? I was, I have your other numbers pulled up I, from like Sac City and their minor league and major league baseball, but. I think I let up like three or four runs in 50 innings in two years in the Northwoods with like a oh my 15 God. K per nine or something. Those, <laughs> Jesus, dude. Do those kids keep the baseball after they got a hit off you? Like actually scored? Uh, I don't think so. Like three guys scored. Oh my God. They should have. That's impressive, man. Going through that, like Thank in you. the moment where you like, this is like too easy for me. Were you just like looking around um, like this is way too much fun? Yeah. I mean – like since I went to a junior college and kind of in everybody's mind, whether they think it or not, they think that junior college is below a D one or D two or D three. Yeah. And I would say, uh, I would say like people, I think they think Juco is right below D one, but above D two. I would say that. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I'm not going to split hairs over that, but yeah, no, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. It is definitely, it's the D one guys think that they're above everybody. Yeah. Yes. So I went in there and I was like, damn, this is going to be good competition. I'm going to be going up against some pretty good D1 guys. And uh, I think it was like the third weekend we played the Mankato Moondogs and it was just stacked with UCLA guys and like mm-hmm. Texas and they had a good team. Yeah. And I went in uh, to close out the game and uh, I think I walked one guy and struck out three. And I was like, what, like, what's so great about these guys? Yeah. You're like, this so, is, you're like, this is what they like D one baseball has to offer. Like this is nothing. Yeah. So like that first year in the Northwoods, it kind of gave me confidence to like, I can do this. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm good enough to do this. And then when I got those free agent offers my first year, it was validation that I could do this. So with all that confidence, I thought that it would be in my best interest to go back to Sac City for a fourth year and get drafted. Mm. And uh, and everybody's going to say, oh, I was supposed to get drafted here, and then I got drafted in this round. I fell a few. But yeah. uh, I was – so with that being said, I was projected to be like fifth to tenth round possibly. Yeah. That's uh, some serious talent. To get picked I mean, I was sitting 93, 95, and then I touched 97, I think, for the first time in the Northwoods sure. when I was 6'3", 180 pounds. <sighs> like, I was yeah. I was skinny. Beanstalk, yeah. And then uh, – um, So – Is that Northwoods uh, – so your time in the Northwoods, it's a moment that I like to refer to a lot as the if to when moment. Like, because uh, mm-hmm. everyone grown up, at least, I mean, at least – myself um i know like i'd be like oh that'd be so cool like if i get drafted one day and if i can play minor league baseball or major league baseball like that'd be such a cool experience is that time is your time in the northwoods is that when it became is that when it stopped being if i get drafted to when i get drafted yes uh just because of when the uh professional scouts approached me and like it was the first time on the phone with them. Like I, they did my interview pretty much. Mm -hmm. And then they immediately offered me the money. 
So I was like, oh, shit. Like, yeah. You're how old? Yeah, 22, like, 23? 20. I, I was, I'm 24 now. Uh, you're what, 21 I was then? 21 then. Yeah. Dude, that's yeah. scary to get numbers like that thrown at you when you're only 21 years old. See, the thing is, when I heard that number, I thought so highly of myself. And I was like, <laughs> honestly, that, like, you're like, no, that's that. chump change. Yeah. Yeah. You suck. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. But, uh, so then I go back for my fourth year. Mm-hmm. Fall comes around. Uh, I had like, I would say I had one, maybe two real opponents at Sac City my fourth year. Uh, one was uh, no, I would only I would say one. <laughs> Yeah, well, sorry. <laughs> was it a was it like uh, a team like or one? Player? No, it was one of my teammates. I, I'm oh, about, like, gotcha, one of my gotcha. Teammates. I thought you meant like yeah. people you were playing against. I gotcha. Yeah, it was uh, Jacob Gunther. He's with the uh, the Rays now. He he went okay. to TCU and then he was a seventh rounder out of there. I think he had like a fifty three game uh, uh, reaching base streak. Oh my god! So he reached base in every single game that they played. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's uh, that's a lot. That's a lot of baseball games. Yeah, uh, and then uh, so I just tear it up in the fall. Uh, have the fall World Series. Do great. Sign out questionnaires for all all the teams, and then uh, life hits. Really, yeah. Like I, I life hit. Uh, You've taught you've told me a little bit about it, but um, yeah, this is like a really hard time in your life, right? Yeah, so I didn't know it at the time, but I was extremely immature. So life hit. Uh, fall World Series happens, and then uh, not my grandpa, but one of my grandpa figures has a heart attack and passes away, and that's tough. Then. Uh, two weeks later or three weeks later my uncle takes his own life and then uh two weeks after that unknowingly my or i knew about it but it's just all unrelated in the incidents that happened but then one of my teammates from the previous year takes his own life uh and then a week after that my grandpa that i was very close with ends up passing away yeah. So in like a, a two to three month period, like I got beat, like just mentally and with life, I, I didn't know how to handle it all at the time. Mm-hmm. So I, I didn't acknowledge my feelings and express my feelings. So they naturally just ate me up inside until I was pretty much useless to the world. Like I didn't want to do anything. I was completely depressed and I know that kind of gets thrown around a little bit. No, I mean, you got, you got put through a situation where life just kept on. Yeah. Like life was just kicking you over and over and over and over again. And And it's a tough thing to deal with. And especially as a baseball player and as a guy growing up in this day and age, like it's hard to kind of like even ask or, you know, reach out to someone to help it, you know, help you out a little bit. Yeah, exactly. And like at that time, I didn't know how to handle like I probably personally now I don't think I knew how to handle one death at the time but especially four at once essentially just compounding on each other yeah I I had no I had no chance so I essentially shut down as a person like didn't really talk to my family didn't really talk to my coaches kind of ghosted my coaches and then they said all right well, you need to come in and talk to us. Uh, And I was like, okay. So I went into my coach's office and my parents were there. I was like, what's happening? And it was kind of an intervention to the point where they said, look, we think we can do great things as a baseball team this year with you, but we don't want to because we want you to figure out who you are. You're not just Nick Mears, a baseball player, a guy with a Jersey out there throwing a baseball. 
your Nick Mayer is the person and you need to figure out who that is before you can come back to baseball. Yeah. So uh, without that meeting, like, I don't know where I would be. I, I, I had no work ethic at the time. I had nothing going for me. I was failing classes. I was just kind of <laughs> being a shithead. Uh, so around, I would say around April, uh, of 2018, I got a call from the coach, uh, in the Northwoods for the Wilmer Stingers, Bo Henning. He's with the Braves now as a, as a coach. And, uh, he said, Hey, uh, I would love to have you back out, uh, this summer, uh, saying and the Wilmer Stingers would too uh if you want to if you're if you think you're ready so around April I kind of decided like I'm done sitting here and moping I want to I want to enjoy life I want to have yeah you want to get back success Mm -hmm. yeah so I started playing catch and then I went out to the Northwoods did the exact same thing I did the year before uh in my last outing in the playoffs I pitched against the Mankato Moon Dogs again. They were stacked again. <laughs> and I went three innings with nine Ks. We'll smell you. <laughs> and then I uh, went home and I was home for two days. And then I flew out to Pirate City Hell to yeah. sign my contract. I was there for four days and then flew to uh, the Black Long Bears. Time. Yeah. Yep. Uh, met them at Mahoney Valley didn't pitch there i pitched uh for my first time in west virginia uh in morgantown and then two weeks i was there for two weeks i think yeah i think i was there shortly after that and met you for the first time yeah yeah, yeah. and then uh and then went home for spring training and at this point i'm i'm skinny like uh-huh. you remember i was I just, yeah, I just want to take a second though and say thank you for like opening up and sharing that story because I knew, um, I had, I remember talking to you at that bar that one night in Morgantown, you you telling me some of the stuff that happened. And I'm going to be honest, it's, it was a long time ago. So I knew I was kind of fuzzy on some of the details, but I just want to say that, you know, thank you for bringing this story to this podcast. Um, because I'm sure it's going to help at least one person. I'm sure it's going to help a lot more than that. Um, and that's a tough story to tell. But it's it's cool to watch someone like you, you know, someone that has been talented for a long time, someone that's you know works their ass off, and someone that's made it to the big leagues this year to be able to open up and kind of expose that side to themselves. Um, Thank you, bro. You means know, a lot. yeah, no problem. And show like if if other people are going through that, then yeah, it's tough. But like you have made it through, like you you are evidence that you know tough times happen, and you can still make it out and still go be a major league baseball player um, mm-hmm. at the end of the day. Yeah, I mean it's super cliche but like there's always a light at the end of the tunnel it's whether you want to see it or not at that time Mm -hmm. because you may be in some shit and you you have to want to get yourself out of that that hole you know it isn't like your friends and family can be there but ultimately it's how bad do you want to be okay how bad do you want to go and do stuff and enjoy things instead of sitting there and being like just depressed all day yeah and it, yeah. it and it's a lot easier said than done i'm making it seem like it's super easy <laughs> but it, it takes work like day to day it isn't easy absolutely thank you seriously yeah. thank, thank you for sharing that story that was that was fantastic but yeah no problem dude. but yeah dude so but anyways yeah we meet each other in morgantown west virginia um yeah man i remember my arm was killing me at that point because i threw like 150 <laughs> 50 innings that year and it was miserable. yeah you told me about that that was yeah, crazy i know and then i didn't even realize like how fresh and new you were too because i mean mm-hmm. i was in pirate city all summer and then i finally got moved out you must have been down like shortly after um yeah and then i remember talking to the gcl guys and being like yeah this kid I think showed up you were through. there for a day when i was I don't, there I, think. I don't know i don't remember because in the morning meetings i think i remember you saying something Maybe I did meet you. Was I sitting? I or was I limping met. around? Was I limping around? I think so. Yeah, because I got hit with a line drive like the day before that yeah. or something. Yeah. So, anyways, I remember hearing about I hate when, like I hate when that happens. Yeah, I kind of deserved that. I threw at the kid the pitch before, so it's kind of squared away. But okay. fair enough. 
Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, anyways, I remember hearing like you went, I was in Bristol and you're very lucky you didn't have to go to Bristol. And then I remember hearing from the GCL guys, oh yeah, that Mears kid went to Morgantown. I was like, God damn it. He's already there. <laughs> I was pissed. <laughs> yeah, I think it was because uh, they just needed arms and I was a free agent sign. So they threw me into the fire. Yeah. So, um, can I ask how many teams were in the free agent signing process? Was it just the pirates and you were like, or was it like the pirates are the first ones you grabbed them? Pirates were the first one to offer me money. Uh, but there were seven or eight teams involved, I believe. Damn. That's exciting, man. That's really exciting. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, and actually when I got to Morgantown, my changeup was my best off-speed pitch. Oh, really? And, yep. And then when I so fall the off-season going into 2019 spring, yeah. I gained 30 pounds and I <laughs> I was lifting the house, yeah. the absolute house. I think I squatted like 440. Holy that off-season back squat, back squat. Uh, oh I, my god. <laughs> I think I straight bar deadlifted like 480. Uh, awesome. No belt, no wraps, no chalk, just units. I'd be more and more impressed, but I'm a huge deadlift guy, so I'm not that shocked by it. Oh uh, well, yeah, no. <laughs> well, I I didn't lift at all before that off season. What? Like none. You were throwing Zero. upper. You were throwing mid to upper nines without lifting. Yeah. I really don't well, like you. I really yeah. don't like you. <laughs> well, why do you think my elbow blew? Because I did the same <laughs> shit. <laughs> it doesn't sustain. Don't yeah. do it. <laughs> Gain some weight. Throw hard. Yeah. Uh, and then. But yeah, so we get into spring training. Gained, yeah, oh, sorry. I, I gained 30 pounds. And then come into spring training. Uh, and I'm sitting 96, 98 in spring training. Holy uh, and then the last game in spring training that year, I popped my first nine against the Blue Jays. Ooh. Uh, I think I was there. Was it at Pirate City? No, it was uh, at the Blue then. Yeah, because Beto got – yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just he got that. hit around. You, you know the, the – Don't worry, Beto's not uh, going to listen to this. <laughs> do you remember the kirk uh the catcher for the blue jays the greatest hitter of all time he hit a cycle off of Beto that day bro yeah alejandro he, he's kirk a five is... foot seven he debuted People. last year too yeah i know i remember yeah. i'm a so i'm a big yankee fan and when he got like called up i told all my yankee buddies i was like don't don't i was like we're in trouble we're in trouble kirk's here <laughs> like what are you talking about i'm like this is the greatest hitter of all time okay yeah i had like a 12 pitch no. at bat against him that spring training too he's a monster yeah so yeah then i'm i touch my first nine then uh i somehow break with greensboro go out somehow. to greensboro Okay. Did you think that I was going to break with Greensboro when I, okay. when I got there to spring? I thought you meant that you thought you were going to go to extended for some reason. Uh, when I got there, I was like, I'm, I'm for sure an extended. I was, well, for I had sure. that mindset too. I think a lot of guys had that mindset and then we all yeah. got, you know, I think some, some of us kind of leapfrog some guys, which mm -hmm. was kind of fun but <laughs> it's kind of fun for us, but I felt bad yeah. for those guys, but um, yeah, dude, they didn't we, work for it. You did. We did. Yeah, we did. Um, but yeah, Welcome. dude, we get to Greensboro, man. Remember it's snowing the first day we were there. Yeah. I, what? Well, no, it was 80 degrees and humid the day before. You remember that? I don't remember that. And then that was the first workout day. We're inside the YMCA <laughs> lifting with grandpa and some short shorts over here. Yeah. And, it's looking out the window and it's snowing. Yeah. Like what ideal. the hell did we get into? <laughs> who, who put a baseball team here? Tell me that. <laughs> yeah. But uh, what yeah, were some I of mean, your impressions of Greensboro, man? Cause I loved that place. I loved it. Oh, I oh loved it. God. It was oh fantastic. Goodness. You know, they're going to be high uh, this year. Yeah. Yeah. They're gonna yeah. Although that yeah. has zero Honestly, impact it, on you. Yeah. 
But I think that it it works logistically though because you're gonna have the younger guys on the low A team and yeah, closer, right there. yeah, closer to the facility. Yeah. Have that all together. That makes more sense, I think. Yeah. Um, so uh, I get to Greensboro. Uh, you were you our closer out the gate? No, no, it was it was kind it was of Stolke, right? just it was a staff kind of. It was Stolky, and then yeah. I kind of yeah. And then, uh, and so instead of Stolke going to Bradenton, I went to Bradenton. I remember that. Um, yeah. What was, that was what's that like? Scene. Like when you, you know, got your first promotion, where were we, were we in Greensboro when that happened? Yeah. So yeah. they remember when they told Shay that he was going up? I don't, I don't know why I don't remember it. I was just trying to think, cause I remember you guys both went up together. Yeah. So after the game, um, Miggy brought everybody together for our post game meeting. And then uh, they, he like pulled a prank on Shay and then like said, just kidding. You're going to Bradenton tomorrow. That's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then, so they tried doing the same shit to me, uh, <laughs> him and Stan Kyle in the coach's office. It's like, Hey man, we're going to need a spot start from you. I was like, bullshit, <laughs> <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> and uh, cause I was walking out and um Someone said, hey, Mears, stick around for like five minutes. And I was like. Was it Jake? I feel like it was Jake. Yeah, it was definitely Jake. Yeah, Jake's the goat, by the way. Love that dude. I miss him. Most underpaid guy in the Pirates organization by far. Not for long, though. You can, you you can, can tell. You can tell. That. You can tell that he's going to be in baseball front offices for the rest of his life. Yeah. No, he's a great dude. Him. Great work ethic. Yeah. Great bush. Uh, <laughs> have you never heard that? I'm. I don't even want to ask what the hell okay. you're talking about right now. All right. Don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, so, I get promoted. I go to Bradenton, um, and I'm pretty sure they throw me right into the closer role. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. No, huge fan of that. Oh yeah, <laughs> we love fan. that. We love that. Yeah. Um, I get to Bradenton. Uh, First outing, I think it was like 17 pitches, um, four strikeouts, two innings. Yo. When's the last time you went two innings? You never did. Uh, yeah, I haven't gone two innings since Nam. Yeah. But anyways, yeah, like what was – I'm, I'm happy. Yeah. What was some of your – <laughs> What were some of your impressions of uh, the Florida State League being in Bradenton? Too fucking hot. It's way too hot. I don't like too that hot. Place. I, I, it's way too hot. I don't understand how you can expect me to sit in an AstroTurf bullpen when it just got done raining and it's a hundred degrees out. Yeah. And you expect me to sit in that bullpen where there's no shade? You're kidding. There's a little bit of shade. There's a little underneath part. Okay. On the right. Do you want to sit in there in the chicken no. coop with everybody? No, no, I don't. I don't uh, it's either that or throw like five, six innings. And I don't know. That's a tough one. No, thanks. Dude, it's a tough one. My first summer in the GCL, I pitched a game. I lost 12 pounds in a day. In a day? Sickening. It was sickening. We played at, uh, in Lakeland at Detroit on their backfields. Oh, yeah. The game started at 12 o'clock. It was the middle of July. I lost 12 pounds. Weighed in at 224, weighed out at 212. That's not okay. I was really upset. I was really not happy. And I went yeah, that's, and I slept that's not for like okay. 12 hours that night. But yeah, <laughs> not Florida's not a great place to play base, to uh, play baseball in the summer. Spring, it's a beautiful. Oh, but spring, summer? January right now, it's beautiful here. Do you remember when that lightning bolt came like 10 feet outside the locker room? I remember everyone freaking out about it. I wasn't like, I didn't watch it. I remember everyone like so, losing their minds. So I was in the video room. And I could, like, they had the doors open, the double mm -hmm. doors to go out of the clubhouse. Yeah. And so I had a straight shot looking outside. <laughs> and I just hear, I just see this, whack, just this huge light go off. And it's just, boom. I'm just, whoa. Everybody <laughs> was just like, did anybody die? <laughs> but it was, honestly, it was cool. Uh, yeah. Sounds Nobody great. died. Nobody got hurt. No one got hurt. It was cool. Um, um so. 
but yeah, yeah no so, playing in uh playing in brains with you though i did get to see more of like the closer side of you and like the mentality and like the energy kind of come out when did that stuff happen because when you come out of the bullpen you are snorting like you are ready to rip someone's head off <laughs> which is hilarious because well, talking to you now first off like, what do you think of a, it does it does it play okay i describe you as the terrifying teletubby to people okay because you are like this suit this like goofy super nice kid and then you get on the mound and you're like scary and i'm like what the fuck i'm like this is well, not yeah. the same kid i was just hanging out with 10 minutes ago yeah and no, like hey, something happens what? when did that start and when, like when did you know when did you really like all right i'm gonna really do this i would say college just because like i said those two injuries the tommy john and then the collarbone i put so much pressure on myself to succeed that that's just where it comes from it's one if I don't do what I want I get pissed Mm -hmm. and that's just who I am I'm a perfectionist or close to it I would say and just like what I do and how I go about my stuff Um, but I would say in college like just because I I think of it as this guy in the batter's box is trying to take it away from me. It's it becomes a really personal thing. Yes. It's, it, it's a tug of war and that rope essentially is a paycheck. That's he is in the way of what I want. Mm-hmm. So I have to go through. Him. So I, I get pissed. I don't care who's in the box. I'll probably end up cussing you out. <laughs> uh if you call time on me i'll call you a bitch uh like every word in the book like you you're see out, it in my you're out there for blood yeah no you're out there for blood yeah yeah like when i'm on the mound throwing bullpens in the off season right now like i got kids talking behind me and i'll turn around and i'll tell them shut the fuck up i'm working <laughs> yeah like because i that's I your time no like you only have x yeah. x amount of bullets before like you're done for the day Exactly. And if this dude's over here cracking jokes and just nice mustache comb, by the way, I, I got to just keep it, keep it in shape, dude. All right. Say on the story, yeah. say on the story, say on the story. We can uh, talk mustaches later. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, I just, my, that type of energy just comes with my desire to win, I guess is what it comes down to mm-hmm. yeah. because I mean, also, and probably around like 400 to 500 ca- uh, milligrams of caffeine every time. <laughs> was just it a rebel? Two scoops of the pre- pre-workout? No, two scoops of pre-workout just right <laughs> there and then take a little water, swish it around, call it good. There we go. I started to get, I, then, I'm not a pre-workout guy. I did start getting into uh, smelling salts though. And that's one hell of a time. Oh, so <laughs> I didn't, I don't, don't get me started on those. Oh my God. Uh, but so recently, uh, Austin Roberts was doing pull downs, uh, or he was doing like compression throws. Uh, he's with the Pirates too. I don't know if you met him. I met him. I met him in spring training. He's got like the long hair with a beard. And yeah. I, yeah. I, I so, met him yeah. So he trains, uh, with me at Optimum Athletes and, uh, he had a, a velo day. So <laughs> he was all pumped up and I, I was on like a scoop and a half pre-workout. It was back squat day. uh, And I see he starts his pull downs. So I come on over and I see something lying on the ground. I'm like, Hey, what's that? (laughs) (laughs) And he goes, it's smelling salts. I was like, Oh, so I reached down, grabbed it. And uh, Robbie's walking back to reset, to go back into his pull down. Yeah. And I, I just go, I rip it once. <laughs> I close it. I'm like, no, 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 no. That that's not enough. So I <laughs> rip it again, <laughs> and I just start screaming, "Let's go, Robbie!" And I, like, we share our facility with uh, PT, which is on the oh other side of the God. gym. So there's some old and lady getting so, her hip work done. Yeah, and I was like, I was about to go, you effing pussy, and I go, you. <laughs> but like i was screaming so loud my voice was cracking like you know the feeling like, yeah you just yeah. yeah you're like okay so, i gotta cool down a little bit that's fine yeah. are they gonna tell me that you like ran over and shoved it in his face and like got him going no i i did give him a velo slap 
There we go. Uh, and Always then he, need those. And he ended up PRing. Ooh. Uh, what do you get up to? Yes. It was his first time ever doing pull downs. Um, he was so we did our pull downs before him because we're set up for big league camp, mm. and he's up, set up for minor league cramp, uh, camp in his programming. Which is going to be and, in uh, April. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and he was like when we we're doing it. I think I I did a a compression throw at 103 six. So just like a, a shuffle and throw. Just showing off. I, I think it was. Yeah. Um, and then, and like he, for a month, he was just saying like, oh yeah, I'm going to hit 104 easy. Like no doubt, like 105 maybe. And uh, so he gets out there and he's like 97, 97. Still 97. 97. Yeah. It's still good. Like and, that's still awesome. I don't ever well, like. He throws 97 off of a mound too. He does? Yeah. I oh, dick. <laughs> God. I told I told Come on, Brad. I've been telling you. Velo is the key. I know, I know. I told um I told S- Eric Sim this when I had him on. Um Yeah, that was sick, by the way. Thanks. Did you listen to it? Yeah. Yeah. It was cool having him on. Um but I, I told I told him this and I told myself this, like I'm hitting 95 this year or I'm going to quit. Cause I've hit 94 so many times in my life and I just cannot break past that barrier into 95 and I I'm doing it this year or I'm going to quit. Cause I, I'm just, I'm so sick of it. And I'm more you? telling myself I'm going to quit just so I can like get myself fired up so I can do it a little bit better. We'll see yeah. if it works. Speak Hopefully it into it existence, yeah. leverage something against it. But so speaking of that, when you leverage something against that goal, like for you, it's hitting 95. What mm-hmm. happens when you hit 95? Get to keep playing baseball. What then? Oh, what then? Oh, yeah. Uh, what then? then like, then what, what's after that? 96, and then 97, okay. and then. I mean, like, if in an ideal world, okay. I, okay. I sit, I sit 93, 95, hitting six. Okay. Like that's well, I'm like, just that's where I want to be at because. I had an issue this kind of this off season, like what's your ultimate goal? Get to the big leagues, right? Yeah. Like, if I'm throwing harder, great. If not, it's going to make my, make my life a little bit harder, but. Well, uh, but so yeah, get, your get ultimate goal leagues. is to get to the big leagues. Get to the big That's leagues what mine was too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there you go. World series. Yeah. It, it, there has to be something past that. Like, what do you want? Like for me, it's, I want to be the leader in saves and uh, have the highest case per nine in the MLB. That's my personal goal. There we go. And I had to. Josh Hader. (laughs) Why not? Hell, dude. Hell yeah. I mean, no, continue. Continue this thought. And then I want to come in with something because I I, I have something else. So, like, there has to be something. You have to have another goal after that that is just as strong. And it's just like what I'm trying to say is you have to have a strong you can't, goal in, in order to be able to get to that level. It has to be a very hard goal and you have to push yourself, but it has to be attainable. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of how all baseball players and athletes work, I guess, just because like we push ourselves to the limit and then we back off. Yeah. But it's yeah. all about goals. Like, sorry if I kind of rambled and that got mixed. No, but. you're good. No, dude, that's good stuff. Cause I mean, th- what this podcast hopefully can do is, you know, help show like kids that are younger, like, Hey, like th- this stuff's possible. Like this is good mm-hmm. advice from guys that have been there, guys that are in that position right now. So hopefully I can start to reach that audience better and hopefully they can, you know, use this to then we see the next, you know, level, you know, the next generation of major leaguers come up and yeah. they're better because we were able to give them this message. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. yeah dude I, I yeah the what i was gonna say though was like growing up like you always think like oh how cool would it be if like you knew like a Jared jeter growing up or a mariano rivera or this that or the other guy and i'm starting to realize like we all do grow up with the next whoever the next you know great pitcher the next great shortstop the next great you know anything 
we all grow up like together. Like uh, it's so weird now, like looking around um, minor league baseball, major league baseball and being like, Oh yeah, I know that guy. Oh yeah. I knew this guy too. Like it's, it's insane. Like yep. when you're younger, you think like, that'd be cool if I just like, maybe I know like a guy or two. We know a lot of people just from playing, <laughs> yeah. just from playing high school baseball, from playing college baseball, and then obviously playing minor league baseball, you know, everybody, but yep. it's, it's cool. As like you get older, you realize like the next leader in saves is, probably gonna be someone you know the next guy that you know wins a world series is probably gonna be someone you know if you just keep playing this game long enough it's a really yep. cool experience yeah cool i agree experience. um but let's let's jump back on topic um you know it's the end of the year i don't know how late in the year did you get them promoted to altoona because i don't uh it was about three weeks left okay two, two or three weeks left yeah yeah so I didn't love how like in high A there was no kind of like ceremony. It's like, hey, this guy's getting moved up. It was kind of like you got told off to the side, and then yeah, and that person well, was even gone before you realized. It was because someone someone got hurt, and oh. so it was like a after the game, like get an assessment, go to the doctor, and then he needs to be replaced. So yeah, it was like I got a call at like eight thirty in the morning. We just we had a, a road trip to the Tigers. Yeah, I remember uh, being like, "Hey, where's Mears?" They were like, "He's not here." I was like, "Okay, where's Mears?" And they're like, "Oh, he's in Altoona." I was like, "All right, sick." Yeah. Come so, uh, Shorty had to drive me there. At I had to wake him up. Uh, tell him to drive me to Lakeland, even though he had to. I think he had to pitch that night. Oh my God. But he was the only other roommate with a car. So uh, he had to drive me to Lakeland and then to the airport and then back and then take the bus to Lakeland for a start. Yeah. Brutal. Jesus. Uh, he's the goat for that, by the way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's the goat for that. Uh, Shouts out to my mans. Uh, but yeah, I went up to Altoona um, immediately started having arm issues uh just because i wasn't i didn't know how to take care of my arm for that long Mm -hmm. that's just i didn't know how to take care of my body for 140 games and then spring training on top of that so uh i was like in altoona i think i touched a six once wow really and And before you left dude you hit 100 right yep is that the only time you've hit 100 uh i hit 101 in uh against the yankees holy shit yeah the, it was the same game i hit 100 i thought yeah, it was in was lakeland like, it was in tampa no i knew i hit 101 the first night i hit 100 okay i i might have uh but anyways no what's that know. what's that like like when you look at the scoreboard and you see three digits like there's not many people that can do that you're a fucking badass <laughs> dude it's cool it's yeah. sick it's no dream. it is yeah like that's any guy that throws 90 it's their dream to hit 100 yeah like like when it's when the 90 and then i would say 95 and then after 95 all you really have is 100 mm-hmm. like you, you throw above 96 it. you throw fuzz either way yeah i would say like Dude, hitting 100, 100 though is special. 100 special. Yeah. Yeah. So I actually threw harder off of a mound than I did in a pull down. I saw that. Was, what? Like, all right. We're jumping all over the place. But yeah, no, I saw you post that video. What was it? Like 102 point something? 102.6. So that was a gray <laughs> walking windup. Which and the gray world record. The gray one is what? That's a world record. <laughs> <laughs> let's go dude i actually beat glass now's driveline record by point two suck at glass now you bitch <laughs> yeah we'll see you. smelly kid out. dude that's sick holy shit congratulations i don't so you're, Thank you now you're not only the first major leaguer but you're also the first world uh guinness world record holder let's go Appreciate it. that's incredible so man that's incredible <laughs> um but dude all right jumping back on topic for the like eighth time this episode um that's fine you get invited to big league camp going into 2020 and then after Arizona fall league, which Arizona I fall league, let up a run. 
that too. Forgot about that. Sorry, my yeah. bad. And hanging out Went with Arizona Fall League. Uh, didn't let up a run in eight and two thirds inning. Uh, didn't make the All Star team. Didn't Weird. get like any uh, accolades. Accolades That's after the season sorry. or anything. Even though through a fucking scoreless shit. Fuck me though, fucking free agent bullshit. It's because of the mustache. I'm pissed I think. about that. I think it's the mustache. I didn't have the mustache at the time. We that, couldn't grow facial hair then. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Yeah, we, could. we could grow facial hair then. Could we? Yeah, 2019, I had a beard. Yep, because I definitely dyed my mustache in Bradenton. <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> You're right. Um, but, yeah. Pissed about that. Arizona yeah, Folly, figure that shit out. Who cares, dude? You're a big leaguer, man. <laughs> no, that shit's unacceptable. Um, what the- – do you remember like getting invited to big league camp? Like what that felt like for the first time? Did you see it coming? Yeah. Oh, you one hundred percent. So, well, I mean, I'm on top of the world right now. Like, I just threw pretty much a uh, a scoreless game against the best prospects in baseball. Mm. Um, and so I'm like, there's no fucking way I don't get invited. Like, I'm goaded right now. You're sitting there just <laughs> waiting for the call, basically. You get the call. And yeah, you're like, yep, exactly. I like, it. Yeah, I mean, what do you want? I I don't let up runs. I strike guys out. So that, that exactly was my mindset well. at the time. <laughs> uh, and so uh, Larry Broadway calls me. I kind of felt bad. Uh, he was like, uh, hey, Nick, it's Larry. I'm like, hey, Larry, how's it going, man? Uh He's like, hey, just wanted to call you to uh, congratulate you that on your invitation to Big League Spring Training. And he was like, so you excited? I was like, honestly, I kind of was expecting it. And, but <laughs> I felt so bad after that. The worst, God. Yeah, no, seriously. Just like Big League the shit out of him. So I, I felt <laughs> bad. That wasn't the way I wanted to handle that conversation. <laughs> but uh, oh, yeah, I get the call. Um Go to the big league spring training, just kid in the candy store, just in awe of everything That's around cool, me. Man. Yeah. Yeah. We actually get to use the big league locker room because we couldn't in Bradenton. I know. The silliest thing yeah. ever. It's sick. It looks it's really cool. Sick. It looks awesome. <laughs> but um go ahead. Sorry, yeah. Uh no, you do that. Things are going great. And then Obviously, 2020 ends uh, the, the you know end spring training because it's the coronavirus and all that crap's going mm-hmm. on. Um, and then you come home and you, you were you just training the whole time, just waiting to get a call from yeah. Pittsburgh, seeing what we were going to do that year. Yeah, so I mean, I I kind of thought I would go to the alternate site. I didn't know how they were going to handle the yeah the players that went there and who like how how they justified it. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, I need to be ready, but I don't want to like overcommit to being ready. So I kind of just maintained uh, the entire time, which was like three or four months. And uh, I was facing hitters once a week. Uh, And then when was it? July? When did we? I I think think it was July when. July yeah. and they did um so it was called summer camp. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So we went we went out in July, um, then uh, kind of settled in in Altoona, and the first month it was just practices really, mm-hmm. um, or the first two weeks were practices because the big league camp was doing their summer camp still, and guys were getting optioned down to us. Uh, like once a week, probably. So I think we got uh, Cedarlin, Hartlieb, uh, Del Pozo. A couple guys here and there, but yeah. Yeah. So So you're like, um, you're, were you kind of just locked in of being like, all right, cool, gonna hang out in Altoona all summer with, you know, Shorty and Oral and Kranich and all your buddies, basically, right? Yeah. So like when I saw those guys get optioned down, I'm like, okay, well they're ahead of me. Mm. And then Cedarland got COVID. And so I forgot about that. That's right. mm -hmm. Tough scene. Uh, So then I, I kind of jumped above him for that little short period of time. 
Um, and then, then the day comes, right? went back up uh, and then everybody just started getting hurt. Mm-hmm. Uh, who was it? Uh, Michael Felix, Tommy John, Nick Birdie went down. Yeah. Uh, Keone got COVID. Um, and just this, that, and the other thing, chaos just starts happening. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I, and then, I you know, you eventually to... you're just in the right place at the right time. And, mm-hmm. Did you see it I coming? I was tearing it up. I, I, no. I was tearing it up in Altoona. And, I mean, I if now that I think of it, it kind of makes sense. But to me, it was such a far-fetched idea that it would actually happen that I just didn't think about it. Yeah. Um, so, some night, or August 18th, I believe, or something like that. I, I don't even mm-hmm. remember my – debut day off the top of my head that's bad <laughs> uh but the night before i debut um our pitching coach calls or uh hanrahan calls me yeah. and ogle at like 12 30 and I'm, I'm asleep uh i've been asleep for like three hours probably and i'm like or he's on facetime with ogle and i lived with ogle in altoona ogle okay. comes up to my room opens my door wakes me up like is yelling at me because i'm so i'm passed out you're passed out yeah yeah and he's like mirrors mirrors wake up i was like what i can hear him (laughs) saying it too like how he says yeah like yeah yeah and he just like shows the phone to me and hanny just goes mirrors you're going to the big leagues and i was like oh shit hold on (laughs) let's go (laughs) say say that one more time (laughs) and he's like mirrors you're going to the big leagues get your shit together i was like Oh, okay. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I didn't know how to act. I mean, I just woke up. Yeah. So you're still delusional. Uh, you're still I, not sure if it's a dream or not. Exactly. Yeah. So luckily, my pitching coach lived about four apartments down. So I got out of bed, got dressed, and walked down there. I was like, what the hell are you saying? <laughs> and it was uh, him, Espo, um, Oh, Susac. Couple and, of coaches, yeah. Yeah, just all the older guys. And they pretty much congratulated me and said, you're going to the show. Um, and Ogle Holy came shit. with me. Uh, he came with me in the uh, car up to Pittsburgh because technically he got the call too. Uh, so it was me and Ogle going up. Yeah. What? And, I didn't know that. So I don't think Pittsburgh. anyone really knows that. Yeah, so we get to Pittsburgh and uh, we're waiting at the gate, like, and because I guess they were deciding who to bring in, or I think they were doing a physical on someone, uh, like making sure they could play. That's yeah. why Ogle was there. And then they let me in, and Ogle tried, or they like Ogle started walking in with me, and they're like, "Wait, wait, wait, just him." And I was just like, "Oh." This went from like the coolest story ever to like not the coolest story ever. That sucks. Yeah. Like, oh my God. I had no idea. Out of my control. But yeah. Jeez. So, I mean, he, he pretty he'll, be, much he'll just be there soon went enough. Went up to a press box and hung out for a game. And then he spent the night there and we drove back together. Jeez. All right. Well, I mean, that does suck. But let's try to like still talk about, you know, your debut. I remember watching it from home yeah. being like, amped up like i i had a dvr i was ready to go i was sitting there watching the whole time man i was so excited yeah so i get there i have no idea what i'm supposed to do like i walk into the clubhouse and i'm just like uh <laughs> i feel like you're a kid, uh, a kid. yeah you yeah like you're no, seriously there. like i was i was just struck i was i didn't know what to do uh-huh. like i i did it essentially like at that moment that's when I kind of was like, I'm here, you know? That's the so, moment for you where you're like, yo, I'm a big leaguer right now when you walked in the locker room for the first time? I wouldn't say I, – I still don't believe I'm a big leaguer. It, Dude, you are. I, you're I, forever I in the history books. Yeah. Uh, that's crazy. But, like, when I was there, it was, like, just the gratification of doing it, you know? Mm-hmm. You, you've worked as long as you can remember for that moment. So. Yeah. It was, it was sick. And then, 
So Derek Holland puts up a fucking. I remember shooter, that. Yeah. Gives up like four up runs like... and five batters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Tough scene. So I come in, run around first and second uh, in the sixth inning, I believe. Okay. Uh, and I get on the mound. I'm get my warm-up pitches. Don't remember a fucking thing. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't remember warming up. I don't remember my jog out. Uh, the only thing I remember is standing on the mound, looking at home plate to see who my first batter is. And I see a fucking tank of Miguel Cabrera walk up to the plate. Triple yeah. crown winner. Are you kidding me? I remember that. Like of all the guys on the me. Tigers, it's a fucking triple crown winner. So One of the, A Hall of Famer. First ballot, no chance. So yeah. first pitch, 97, up in the zone. Second pitch, 97, up in the zone. Third pitch, 97, up in the zone. He pops it up to the right field foul line. And oh my first God, baseman, I remember this. Yeah. Phil Evans is going back. Right fielder Gregory Polanco is coming forward. Yeah. They meet. Polanco catches Phil Evans' ch- uh, chin with a nice little elbow piece. Yeah. I remember knocks him out he got completely. He, he got knocked the fuck out. I didn't know he got knocked out. I just saw him like go down. I was like, oh, hey, he's done for the day. No, he was he, knocked out. He got out. knocked out. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. And then I, I like five minutes into it, I start walking down towards. I'm like trying to assess the situation. I have no idea what's going on. Mm. And I start walking there and all the, the entire team is there besides me. Mm. So you're like, I should probably go I, check out on yeah, Phil. Probably should be a good teammate, right? Yeah. Well, the umpire thought differently. He said, Nick, don't go over there. I said, okay. So <laughs> yes, sir. I walked my ass over to the third base coach, started talking to him. Oh, my God. Yeah. Was he so, just like, this uh, is a tough way to make a debut? Or Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, it's my fucking debut right now. He's like, whoops. <laughs> but uh, then uh, walk the next guy, strike out the next guy, walk the next guy think i give up like a single that scores a run yeah. and i strike out the last guy so yeah. and you walk off the mound and you're okay. forever a big leaguer yep and then i was shaking until about two hours after the game Are you serious two hours yeah two hours oh, yeah lord yeah so that's my debut Dude, that's that's still so cool. Like, I, I can't even imagine. Um, and it was it was surreal just even being able to be like, yeah, like I played with this kid and he's in the big leagues now. Like, it was it was cool for I me and I'm sure a lot of you know a lot of the other guys are in the Pirates with you know all together. Um, but dude, oh, you freaking, you freaking made your debut and you're forever there. Um, what's Thank the you. I appreciate that. yeah. Um, what's kind of like, you know, the goals going into 2021, you know, just being the big leagues for all 162. I doubt that'll happen. Um, but I want to be the closer by the end of the year. That's, yeah. that's it. Yeah, dude. I'm excited. I'm really excited to, to see it. And I'm sure, I'm sure you have the capability to do it, man. Cause you know, all Maybe. you need is just that I'm, one opportunity. I want it. I mean, yeah. You're gonna rip it through everybody. Yeah, that's you, the plan. Have you been throwing every bullpen this offseason thinking like, all right, Anthony Rizzo's in the box, Javi Baez is in the box. Um I don't care who's in the box. You don't care, you don't think about that stuff? The only thing I care about is their swing path. Good point. All right, good point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Love to if hear I can that, find man. a hole in it, I'm gonna throw it there. Yeah, yeah man. Um Dude, I, I, I've been talking about this uh, with the other guy, the other Pirates guys that have come on here, man. I'm really excited to see what our team, you know, can get going in these next couple of years because I think we have a really talented group of guys. Um, I, I seriously think so, too. Yeah. I think that there's a few guys that need to figure out how to properly go about some business. But once they figure that out, I think that it's going to be good. I, I like to – characterize it as we are going to be the problem for the league. Like it's going to be really annoying for everybody else when we 
get all of our guys up there. Like our bullpen alone is going to be hilarious. You, yeah. Searland, Shea, John, uh, John O'Reilly, Joe Jakes. I mean, and the list goes on and on. Dude, Joe's so nasty. Oh He's my so goodness. filthy. And then O'Reilly bumped a 98 the other day. Did I didn't know that. that? I, no, I saw him yeah. post a picture where he looks like freaking Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, he's huge. He's enormous. Yeah. But, yeah, no, our bullpen alone is going to be terrifying, and I'm so excited for that. Yeah. And, and Ogle, too, dude, I freaking – it just yeah. goes – the list goes on and on. Um, I, as we kind of wrap up here, because we have been going for quite a while. Um, have we? Yeah, I, they usually run about an hour. Um, and I tell everyone I try to keep it to 40 minutes, but it always goes an hour. Um, <laughs> going off of that though like when uh when are me you and the pittsburgh pirates winning the world series i put it at like 24 25 that's i was trying to decide between those yeah i would say 24 24 24 pittsburgh pirates world series yeah. champions man that's that's the ultimate goal dude i want that so bad <laughs> me too yeah. i want to shut out a world series game Hell yes, dude. I want to start one. Start one and I hand it right to you. Um, hey, I'm fine with that. <laughs> um, all right, last question. I love to have, uh, ask everybody that comes on here. From a major leaguer, what advice can you give to like a 16-year-old version of Nick Mears? What advice would you kind of tell him going forward? Quit being a dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. Just, uh, but... I would say if you determine that you want something bad enough, you're going to need to, you're going to need to sacrifice some things for that goal. Things like because partying, hanging out with your friends, playing video games, crap like yeah, that, right? Just, yeah. Just distractions. Like everybody has distractions. It isn't like someone has more than the other. It's whether they choose to indulge them or get past them it's so that they can get to their their goal or yeah. whatever i got you perfect dude thank you so much again for coming how, on the how does that rank with everybody else's that's really good most other guys have been ranting and raving for like 10 minutes on and it really drives me crazy but that was perfect thank you so okay. much again nick Mears, for coming on man yeah no problem brad thanks again guys for listening to another episode of the minor league take i've been your host brad case um this was a fantastic episode i really love to do it with nick um and it was one that i was excited to do for a long time especially you know with him being a big leader and everything um hopefully he's going to be on the team all year this year we get to see him um shove down people's throats like i know he's capable of um thank you again guys for checking out another episode don't forget to rate review subscribe follow the pages um check me out on instagram at brad underscore queso uh, that's the handle for all my social medias. Um, go check it out. You know, the actual pages for the show too. Um, at MILB take and at the MILB take. Um, so yeah, go check out all those. Thank you guys again for checking another episode. This thing is growing bigger and bigger and I'm really loving the support. Thank you guys. And next week we have Ryan Smith on the podcast prospect with the angels. All right. Thanks for checking this out and I'll see you next week.